Welcome back to Coin Mojo. So over the course of 15 years, I've been coin roll hunting. And during that period, I found lots of different kinds of half dollar coins, many of which are double die errors, uh, no FGs, um, I got colorized coins, I've got priest dies, I have double stamps, I've got magic coins, I have two-headed two -headed halves, I've got two tailed halves. One of my magic coins actually has a, what I believe is a 74 in the front, but the back, I believe, is a, is a silver planchet. There's plenty of material here for uh, additional videos, but what I want to bring to you today is uh, I went to the coin show today and I took my coin uh, roll of oddities. And in there, you might notice that, that that looks like a lead coin there. I thought maybe these were aluminum. Um, some of these look like they might have been copper. Uh, there's another lead one there. So uh, at the show, they had a, a gentleman that uh, has a machine that can tell you what your coins are composed of. So the following clips are from this afternoon, and uh, we'll discuss the coins and the analysis. I'm Mark Benvenuto, and I certainly give you permission to use what I'm saying here and what we're analyzing here on YouTube or any other social media or whatnot channel. So what we have is a United States Kennedy half dollar in the XRF analyzer, and we believe that it might be made of lead because it seems to feel different than the other. So press the trigger, take a look at the PDA readout. I know that's a little old fashioned nowadays, but notice that there's two relatively equal large peaks there. If this thing was just copper nickel, like a proper half dollar should be, you would only have one peak and maybe another sort of overlapping it. But this second really big one to my, I guess, right or far aside is pretty close to or pretty much what I believe is going to be lead. So I'm leaving this as I'm talking. I'm looking at the, um, the time that we've had this going and we are approaching 30 seconds. It's a lot of x-rays. Let's turn it off and let the computer do the integration. But you can see even through that, there's a little bit of copper in this thing, but 36,000 parts per million is basically the equivalent of 3%. Lead, 718 parts per million is essentially, what, 72%. So I did not calibrate this from zero to 100% for lead. And so that number is not perfectly accurate. Is it 70% lead? Is it 75% lead? I don't know. But the simple fact that it's made of lead probably indicates that somebody who made it did not exactly use lead directly from a scientific supply house. They probably got lead from a scrapyard or something like that, which would be a good reason, but there's other metals in there. So can we show it. them the coin? Yes, let's show them the so coin. So what we have is a 1979 Kennedy half dollar. That is predominantly made of lead. Let me get the light in there. Okay. How about like that? Yeah, let's get a zoom in on it. Yeah, so would you like me to turn it over? Sure. And turn it over. I mean, it's so on the, other than the color and the weight, mm -hmm. you wouldn't suspect uh, the average Joe this wouldn't would, suspect it. This would probably pass if you had a lot of coins and someone it was just moving did it pass. quickly. I got it in a roll from Brinks. Okay, <laughs> then it passed at least once. Yeah. Okay. But yeah, there you go. All right. Thank you. You are very welcome. Thank you so much. Okay. Mark Benvenuto again. We are going to analyze by x-ray this half dollar, which is a bicentennial half dollar. Mark 1776, 1976. We are not sure what it's made of, but suspect it might be counterfeit. So we've put it in the XRF chamber. We are now analyzing it. The spectrum has come up, this black box at the bottom. And shortly we'll get some readings as the PDA integrates this as to what it happens to be. And right off the bat, it has a little bit of copper and almost entirely lead. And we do have two really big peaks, as well as this small peak up here, that are indicative of lead. Having run a bunch of lead objects over the course of years, after a while you get to know where they ought to show up. We'll let this go for 30 seconds. We're at 25 seconds right now. That should give us enough peaks that when we turn it off, like right now, we'll let the computer integrate it and see what it comes up to. 
in that time, I will take the half dollar off. Can you see that? All right, it is basically saying that this is a lead coin. As in 99.5%, we flip it over. And that's what it's saying. 995,000 parts per million is 99.5%. So, give or take, as I said, I did not calibrate this all the way for lead, but that's our indicator. Okay. Congratulations, you have a lead 50 cent piece. I got three of them. <laughs> <laughs> but no pure copper ones. So, no. yeah, okay. Okay, what else are we going to take a look at? That looked copper, but that were correct. Okay, that so. were not fakes. And the little extra here, uh, where'd it go? Oh, it shifted down. The nickel is copper and nickel overlap each other periodically when you have a lot of it. So I would add the nickel. I'm sorry. I said nickel, the zinc. I would add the zinc into the copper myself. Um, but this basically looks like a dime that somebody did some abusive work to. Okay. So it's not un different than a regular dime. No, nope, it looks like a it looks like an ugly dime, but its composition is the same as a regular dime. It is definitely ugly. <laughs> okay. <laughs> this is you. where beat up stands for butt ugly, right? Yep. Anyway. Okay, so we just heard the expert analysis from Mark. I'm going to show you the coins a little bit closer up uh, now that I'm at home. Uh, this is the first one we measured, and it did come out as a lead coin. As you can see, the back's pretty is worn flat, smooth. This is a 74, I believe, 79. This one came out um, to be also lead. You can see on the edge. Uh, I just want to take note, the coin did not appear to be different from a uh, regular Kennedy half. And, you know, so I was a little bit stumped by it. This bicentennial it looks pretty clean. It didn't have a lot of nicks or dents in it. Uh, the edges weren't worn too too smooth. Um, as you can see, the other two were pretty tattered. Edges were worn for fairly smooth. And uh, so those were the three that we we had in the video with Mark, and this is the dime. And uh, when I first saw it, it, it looked copper. I didn't want to wash it, clean it scrape it or anything i i wanted to get this and out analyzed i actually uh, met mark back in february of 2019 and i didn't have my coins with me uh so we were going to meet up at the next show and of course covid struck and then i didn't get a chance to uh to get this until now so i've had these uh assortment of uh kennedy halves that had partially looked like you know the back half of the clad was missing this one was uh, partially chipped, and you can see there's some anomalies in the edge there. Um, I personally feel like this is missing part of the planchet. Uh, the first one looked like the, the entire half of the planchet was missing, or not planchet, but the cladding. Uh, Mark couldn't advise me on any of the, you know, the possibilities of whether or not these were uh, bad plants or not it wasn't really his expertise his expertise is in metal analysis and um, so he was able to determine that these coins at least on his xrf machine did not <clears throat> come across as anything different he did say that they they had a heavier content of lead or not lead but uh, these uh, had more copper this one did not come out to be anything nor uh, outside of the normal range for a clad coin so i'm guessing that maybe these were just uh they're either dipped or shellacked or you know i we speculated that maybe maybe it's just uh, coated in varnish or something gave it that brown now these i thought were actually uh silver or aluminum because they they're pretty bent up um but they didn't appear. They may just very well be painted because uh, these did not come across as anything, uh, at least molecular, uh, to be anything different than a normal planchet. 
um, I had this 64. I wanted to show you how it, you know, how it stumped me because uh, I kind of edge search when I do my coin roll hunting. And ironically, uh, I didn't realize that I grabbed a, a two-headed 64. I didn't, I, I, I know I had this, but I, I forgot about it. <laughs> so there's a two-headed uh, 64. Pretty cool. Um, <clears throat> so I have this scale, but I think it's just a uh, male scale. And you can see that uh, I think all but the lead, two of the three leads came up to be 0.4 ounces. Unfortunately, my scale didn't go to two digits. And, um, yeah, all of these ended up being 4.4. .4. And uh, you'll see when we get to the, the three lead ones, they one of them came out 0.4, the other two came out 0.5, so clearly a little bit heavier. And uh, so I just wanted to bring to you some of the different techniques that you might use to measure a coin or check the authenticity. Obviously, I have to get a better scale than what I've got here. Um, so again, these are the three coins. Uh, the first one did come up as uh, 0.4. Uh, this one came out at 0.5. And I'm take a closer look at it. See, you can see that the... As, Although they're tattered, the stamping or the die um, looks pretty normal, right? And this one, of course, was just worn the whole entire bag. That was the first one I found in my coin row hunting adventures. The other two came later. So here's Mark's uh, fly sheet that he had sitting on his table. Kind of describes what he does and how his machine functions and... This is his email. If you're interested in any of his services, you can give him a call. Thanks for watching Coin Mojo. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you do, comment and share. Please share. Really need to get uh, the word out. It's pretty interesting stuff. So hit the like button, hit that subscribe, hit the bell. Give me four clicks here. And then on the bell, click again. Thanks again for uh, watching Coin Mojo. Coin Mojo out.